educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this beautiful, bright, lovely day here in the Boston area. We're looking at the Dow down 45, Monday, the 8th of May, getting well into that month. Had a pretty spectacular move on Wednesday, on Friday. Look at this. This is, the, you remember the techniques that I was using? I, I, let me just go right here, straight to it. And I'll do this with the um, nine period moving average. Look, the Dow is down uh, 40 at 33,632. And one of the things we were looking at is that nine period moving average turning negative. It took a long time. What I looked for was an M shaped pattern, but that M shaped, pat M -shaped pattern. Did exactly what we wanted, and the Dow fell sharply and had a spectacular run on Friday. But you see that it's still S, that the nine period is still under the 14, which means that there's still overhead resistance. But wait a minute, look at the S&P using the same technique, simple technique. One day negative, and the next thing we know, crosses positive, the nine period moving average. But it doesn't do that very often. And if it does do that, I'm just scrolling back here. Look, how many times has it done that? Not very often. We went through this on Friday. Uh, right there is the same characteristic that I was looking for, but we did not continue down. Instead, we turned up. And you can just go back. I'm scrolling this daily chart. The big, thick gray line is the closing price of the S&P. Lo and behold, nope, not even there. I'm trying to find it. So I've got to be really careful. The only time it's done it to the downside was way back in January of 2020, right there, January 2022, 11th of January. It went from a short, a very quick short to a very quick buy, and then a very quick turn down to pink. And then it continued on its way down. So it's a process. It's always a process, and in this particular instance, what we are looking at is the QQQ didn't even get that far. It didn't even cross negative. It is still holding positively. And you can see it had a one-day reversal and then went right back to L, meaning long. But I'm beginning to see signs of some deterioration, and it's become so selective, although in a sense Friday turned into a fairly broad rally, it was a broad rally against the backdrop of being led by spectacular move of, um, look at Meta, Facebook. Look at that huge move up. And it got the nine period moving average to deflect higher without going pink back around the end of April. It's still green, but you can see the price is starting to wear down. If you're looking at Microsoft, same thing, very good move. It went one day green to red, I uh, saw to pink, and then back to to L green. So I'm looking at this as a process. What I said to subscribers, I would not be surprised if we are looking at a rectangle formation. And the rectangle formation will give us an, a very good clue this week to say, and this we've got in the Dow, which is a rectangle between the 34,000 of uh, five six hundred area and the thirty three thousand, uh, I'd even go to as far as to say thirty two thousand five hundred. So it's stuck within this range, and you can keep doing that for a little while as everything gets repaired. Now wait a minute, let's just go to um, gold and look at the same technique. Now, gold at the spiral to the upside with a leg D in the Chapman methodology. D's where other things can happen. It's a leg F in the weekly chart. It's a leg, a brand new leg, gray leg A in the um, in the monthly chart. But here's the issue: that if you look at this, look at the higher highs in gold. It's made higher highs, and that's very impressive. Now look at this. If I draw in 
a resistance line, champion wave inside track repellent zone in the gold, you're right here. You're right here in the uh, resistance area. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, all right, I'm trying to put the package together for my subscribers to my opening call. Uh, we are we're still call long from uh, the October lows and the down, the three times long. Though. We've had trading positions, we've had a trading position, the short side in the S&P, the day after the high was made. Uh, we took profits on Friday. This is going to be very interesting. You remember that I like to look at inside track repellent zones. So let's just use this as a template. So here's gold. And you remember what we were looking at is within the inside track repellent and propellant zones, there is a rising wedge narrowing. And we saw that I drew it very distinctly in the S&P. Look, here it is in the daily. Look, this is the same chart. It has higher highs that keep hitting a resistance level. Higher lows, they keep hitting a support level. Look at the Dow, it's the same thing. Here we go. Look at this. There's that rising pennant flag. It's a, a tapering pennant flag. Pulls back and gets hit right there at the resistance area. So I'm trying to put charts together, and I'm saying, wait a minute. <clears throat> if the financials had a really strong session on Friday, <clears throat> pulling back some today, was that a one-off? was KRE, uh, the XLF, up $0.06 cents at 32.39 in this uh, Chapman Wave falling axe formation, lower highs and much lower lows. But wait a minute. I spoke about this uh, on KRE. This is S&P Regional Banking ETF. I'm talking charts. I'm going to come right back to those charts that we were looking at. I'll look at, I'll look at gold once more. But there was, there was a potential for a Chapman Wave price volume climax on Friday. Uh, sorry, on Thursday. And the, the requisite pop above the gap down high the following session and a close above it. That was important. It's in a sector that's been under duress, under extreme duress. Is this really the low in the KRE that's going to say with, for 28 days it's not going to take out the 34.52 low of 4 on the 4th of, of uh, May? Well, I prefer technically to see three gaps, uh, three big candles down with two big gaps. We got one gap. So this has got part of the requisite. This other thing, I haven't really back tested enough charts to say it really should be three big, big candles with two gaps to the downside with a volume climax low that spirals to the upside immediately. Um, so all I can say is just I'm going empirically on, the, on my knowledge that I, that I have so far. Um, but I haven't done a statistical count. So all I can say is I'm watching this closely because if the regional banks can finally find some support, there's a chance that the GDX and gold, maybe even silver, really holds well because of other factors, other big economic factors. But as a financial crisis, that part of it could be eased for a little while before the next big bank crisis. I don't know. This is the way I'm looking at it. So now let's go back to the charts. So I looked at gold and I said, this rising wedge formation, and it's a narrowing wedge, says very simply that if gold takes out 1973 support in the next week and a half on a closing basis, it's kind of done for this phase, just for this phase. And that would be that perhaps we're going to see the financials in East have a pretty well-deserved recovery phase for at least a little period, three to five weeks maybe. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down. Uh, 55 SMBs down. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities. Subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so we're, we're back and talking patterns, the rectangle pattern means you can stay in this rectangle. This is a large rectangle that's becoming a narrow one in the down, the weekly chart. You can stay in this range a lot longer than your patience. Looking at the S&P, I'm watching this very closely because if the nine period moving average, it, it, to get it to flip back to negative, you'd have to see the S&P below 4,080, uh, probably 75. Uh, that'll probably turn it back to negative. And I would not be surprised if this week what we're seeing is a rotation, a testing of the strength that we saw to see whether or not the the flip to the upside on Friday has sustainability because normally you would get at least a good part, if not 30%, maybe even 50% of the last hours, hour, hour and a half's rally on, on, in this case, on Friday. You'd give back some of that. I still see some buying, but it's tentative buying now today. If there was really, if we gapped up, and right now the Dow was up 230, the S&P was up about uh, 58 or 60 points, I'd say, you know what? That was a very significant turn, at least for the very short term. Right now, I think it's an effort. It's it's a the market is vulnerable at this particular point to sudden news related, um, just news stories that come out that impact, and then you get covering on the short side, or or um, or you get buying on the short side and then more more shorting. So at this particular point, here's the pattern where we went to the rising wedge. This is the uh, narrowing wedge formation pennant. And what happened was we went under it. Now we're back in it. Look at the, SM, look at, look at the Dow. The Dow went under it and now is being repelled at exactly the point that was the form of support. Now is resistance. Now I want you to just do this IWM. Is try it had tried to rally now it's down 70 cents and 173.77. Now, so interesting the iShares, the Russell 2000, and I mentioned this in my video for subscribers, my hour long video on this is besides the webinar that I did, but my hour long uh, video on on Saturday as an overview. Um, I mentioned that I had just a slew. I, in fact, I didn't even remember seeing as many when the oil service stocks were moving. I saw this. But I had 
one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. About twenty-three um, very low-priced stocks, screamers underneath uh, ten dollars, flash over the last couple of days. Yeah, I mean that's really. I mean, here's one. I, I think I mentioned it the other day. Alec, uh, this is Alector Therapeutics uh, for neurodegenerative diseases. As spectacular. I mean, you wouldn't expect on that that it would still go even higher. And look at this. It popped today from uh, Friday's 740s to today's $7.51. It hit 7.71. So a lot of these things. And they, they are telling me that money is trying to find its way into areas um, that have the potential, like the, 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 the micro Bio, biotech stocks, they, some of them have been on a test, some of them really took a clobbering over the last couple of weeks, now trying to come back. But it's really interesting. So, all right, enough with that. What I want to do is go back to the story to say, look, in the GDX, the GDX is up $0.07 cents right now, thirty-five forty-seven. When you've had this kind of a move and you've made the cup formation, what I like to do is to assess the vertical technicals when it makes the left side high, then the cup formation, and then the right side high. And all it says is if the technicals are weaker, you can pull back. It doesn't say, oh, my God, now you're going to crash. It just says, watch out for a pullback. If you take out the, the trough, the cup low, you can go a lot lower. And from a move like this, you can actually go quite a bit low if you close below that. But if you're holding steady, you can go from a cup formation to a U a double U formation. That's how the, the letter W comes from. It's two U's stuck together. And it's funny that I mentioned that because it took me forever to actually realize that that's, that's what a W was. I'm sure somewhere I'd been told, but it just I just said W. But now I say W and I'm thinking, ah, two U's, ah. And that's what we're looking at, the chances of a little bifocals here. You've got your cup, you've got your second cup. We'll see if that's going to hold. But it is holding extremely well. If you look at... Um, silver, SI, silver did the same thing. It didn't take out the lefts. Uh, I think it did by a fraction. Let me just double check. It might have done it by a couple of pennies. So the high that was made on the 14th of April, this is the continuous contract at 26.44, had a high less than a month later of 20. Yeah, that's a... 20, 24.40, if I can read the darn thing, 43. By pennies, it failed to take that out. So you've got yourself a little potential cup formation or a failure pattern. Unless it starts to trade, if silver, on a, there's the continuous contract, actually starts to trade at 26.68 in that area, 26.68, and touches 27.15 this week, I will be very impressed and say, you know what, that weekly chart with all the technicals, the stochastic steady at 85%, uh, the MACD good, the nine period over the 14, you're just saying that for the month of April, there's uh, month of May, there's a really good chance for the first time that silver continuous contract in the monthly chart is going to hold above the inside track repellent zone. It went above it last week, month, but it didn't hold. It closed just on the line, and now it's holding above it. So this is a very important moment, in, just on a purely technical basis. The other aspect I wanted to talk about is it's called, is, is the dollar <clears throat> is holding steady. It's really stuck in a sideways trading band. It's not a very partic a particularly strong weekly pattern or a monthly pattern. It looks like it wants to go even lower. But if the dollar trading at 101.14, down eight ticks right now, is able to get to the 101, it doesn't have to close there, it just has to touch 101.68, 101.72, and all of a sudden, you've got yourself a pattern that says the MACD could deflect higher, the stochastic, which is very weak at 30%, on balance volume is, uh, where did that, is still very weak. It has a chance to repair some damage and modestly move up. I don't see a big move into the 103s, not at this particular point. It might change in another couple of days, but those signs aren't there yet. But it can hold steady. And holding steady is quite good. But the trouble is, look at the euro. The euro is trading, just walking the nine period, moving average, slips under the 14, uses that as a springboard, and then closes over and over and over again above the green line. 
It's trading 1.102, up 0.00105. And the, uh, uh, this, is, this is the weekly chart. The weekly chart is just holding steady at the most recent highs. Um, very good action. And the monthly chart as in a leg B. And if you look at the USD JPY, this is the yen, the Japanese yen currency pair. You'll see that it did exactly what we were looking at recently. Uh, about a month ago, I drew this in and I said, there's a chance that you could get a rally to the 137.91 high of March. Um, and it would take until, and I drew in the Chapman Wave Cup formation with inside wedge target resistance line, the left side, right side price time match to a particular candle, which was not the lower, the, the trough, it was moved over to the right to a particular candle. And it said by the uh, 2nd of May, it should try for the 137.91 level. And what did it do? It went to 137.77 and then turned down. So yes, it missed it by a fraction, but it went right to the door and then turned around. And now it's holding the 200 period moving average at 134.93, up 0.09. I'll be right back. Down's down. Um, 92. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So I just, I had a, uh, someone mentioned XPEV, that they had calls on XPEV. XPEV is XP, XP, <clears throat> designs uh, uh, and manufactures smart EVs. Yeah. 
So it had a pop today. It's up 34 cents at 10.44. Remember, this is the pattern that I always look for at a peak. D, E, or F, if you start to get lower highs and much lower lows, you're making that pattern that I call the dreaded, uh, sorry, the falling axe formation. <clears throat> I think it's got a little resistance here. Uh, it's holding okay. Uh, more importantly, uh, the monthly looks just horrible. The weekly looks terrible. And the daily is doing very nicely, considering that it was at 750 just recently. It popped up to the 11s, 1150 area. Doji candle at peak D, making low lows and lower highs. Yeah, I just be real careful with this. If you, if you want, if you, you, I don't have to tell you because you use options all the time, uh, GT. But I would just say, make sure that uh, it doesn't close suddenly below 10, uh, 10, even 10.15. Closes under 1015. It's just going to be back in the stuck range, but a very short term pops. That's fine. Uh, another question I had was going to look at FXI. FXI is <clears throat> now this is going to be interesting because I know that you're basing your XPEV a little bit on the action of the iShares China Large Cap ETF, which is up 16 cents at 28.82. It's playing catch up. Had a good session Friday. Had a gap up today. Of course, overseas trading says so gap up. Hit 29.01, now 28.82. I think that this is telling me that it is in play, but it is in play in a smaller range, and that the lowercase h successfully held the left side low in the weekly chart, and now I'm looking at a potential um, h pattern that goes to a lowercase m-shaped formation. So that says, like XBEV, it could also bounce, but it's more, actually it's a little bit, uh, in, in a way, it's a little bit better pattern than the XBEV, but I'm, I'm just looking at it and say, okay, if you're long, I don't know if you are, but if you're looking at this as a play to the upside, it's, there's the inside track repellent zone, the falling axe formation as well, and all I can say is if, if FXI trading at 2881 is able by Wednesday or even Thursday, Without closing under 28.50, if it's able to get to 29, ooh, 29.65, just 64% uh, above today's high, I would say that's good action. That's suggesting that, yes, there is some buying going on here, but that buying is all within the containment area. Question I had about what was a DXJ? DXJ. Why am I forgetting uh, DXJ is? Uh, let's look. Oh, I had this all notated once upon a time. This is the WT, oh, 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 I must talk about WT. This is the WT, this is the wisdom tree, I believe. Uh, Japan, oh, isn't that a coincidence? Japan Holdings Equity Fund. So look at this peak, let me just do this live here. So this is very interesting. This is the monthly chart, peak A, peak B. All I'm doing is counting each successively higher peak, peak D. Now the question is, is this an instant restart? No, it's not. Is this a new high? It's hard to tell. It could be within pennies. So the high of 63.29 in September of last year, of two years ago, uh, 20, uh, well, 37, and you had 29. Yeah, so that's an E and F. Oh, this is really interesting. Oh, thank you for bringing this up. E. F pulls back, pulls back for one month, kaploop, and then the next month just continues on its way as if nothing had happened. Uh, this is like a related instant restart, but you never get them. Uh, D is the only place I talk about Chapman Wave instant restarts. Uh, a, B, oh, this is so interesting. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. This is 73.34, 73.29, and there's your leg D. In the Chapman methodology, we're always looking for a buy signal to go to at least, no, go to a buy mode that's going to go to at least four higher peaks. It's after that that anything can happen. So it's already achieved this second buy mode in the monthly chart. Wow, this is so interesting. I'm looking at this now. Now I have to open. I open a chart as much as I can, as as far back, because I want to pick the lowest, most identifiable low. That's when you can do your wave count. So this goes, A, 
B, and I'm going in the weekly chart, there's another A because it's lower than that, but here's your starting point. So I'll put an up arrow right here. And it's walking the nine period moving average just once for one bar, two bars. It went pink and then went back to green. Oh, this is so fantastic. Um, B, right there. And then a little mini A right there. This is the reason why I start from the, that, the low bar. Every peak gets counted. And now look what happened. We go C1, C2, and a brand new buy signal right here. Oh, what a nice chart. Peak A. And what what is this again? This is the Japan Holding Equity Fund. And I don't know what they have in it. I wouldn't know because I don't follow the Japanese stocks. Well, I follow some, but I follow them in the context of the uh, U.S. market. Okay, interesting. So now what we've got is... I'm just going to join. When I can see lines that I can join, I join them. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Is that not a chat wave inside track repellent zone right there? Look at that. Going back to uh, 2021, this is the high that was made uh, late March, early April. And look at, and look at this beautiful. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Like that. And then I join beautiful ball formation with rising highs and rising lows. Let's get out of the weekly chart and see where we are. Thank you so much, Omar, for that's that's really good. Um, now we're going to go to um, there, the low at the 200 period moving average, March the 13th or so, and then it goes peak A. Oh, this is something worth watching. Now I'm not sure I would get a position in this. Because it's a slow mover, but it's really moving up with higher highs and higher lows. But what I am interested in, and very interested in, in fact, is that um, it's telling me that in some, some countries, certain sectors are doing extremely well. You cannot rule out that uh, this is a sector rotation. And as a sector rotation, uh, it's a sector rotation within countries. And yes, Japan. So let me just look at the Nike uh, Nike, this is not Nike, this is Nikkei, uh, NK, continuous contract. I haven't updated it for a while. Yeah, look at that. Peak A, peak B, peak C, and then it takes a, oh, is that the low? Yep, that's the low. And then it goes under it, peak A, peak B, peak leg C. Okay, so Japan is doing very nicely. The Nikkei is doing very nicely. I'm so pleased I saw that. Um, that's really important to note. And I'll be back in a moment to exchange. But I didn't actually didn't get any story on the exchange, what to look at. So we'll be back. We're looking at the exchange, Japan holdings. I'll be right back. Bow is down. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. 
These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hello, we're back, and uh, yes, yeah, so the DXJ is the one that wasn't uh, holding, it was hedged. So the DXJ is again hedged Japanese equities. So that's why it's doing so well. So it's actually uh, probably an inverse in many ways, and we're looking at it going to higher highs, in fact, an all-time high. So this is going to be really important. Thank you for bringing it to my attention because I'm looking at this and I'm saying if I'm correct – in this drawing of the trend line, simple trend line that anybody can draw, you just take your ruler. Everyone has that on the uh, uh, your on your trading platform, and you take the out, outer wicks, the highs, and then you go in about three sixteenths of an inch or to the body of some of the candles, and that just says that if this closes on a weekly basis, it's a seventy three twenty eight down a penny right now. A closing over 70, I'd have to make it higher, 74, 73, 30, and it takes a little while to move a point. So if it closes above, I'm going to be a little bit brazen. I'm going to say, let's go further out, 76.10. If it closes above 76.10, I suspect we're looking at a general weaker uh, American market for a while, if this is the relationship that I'm looking at right now. But in the meantime, Based on the Nikkei, also doing very nicely. It looks not unsimilar. This is saying that Japan right now is finally seeing um, a very big, a very long-term consolidation all the way from 2021 back about January, February. And yeah, we are almost at that same level of 29,000 in the futures, 29,015. Um, just stuck, and I can. I, I, I've been seeing this pattern more and more. Where overall, there's a cup formation, even though there are one or two little pops above the left side high. The the pattern itself says, except for one spike to the downside, it's mostly higher lows and higher highs. But then it gets to the strong thirty thousand. So if the Nikkei together with the DXJ, if if the DXJ is trading at thirty thousand one seventy. At any point, in this case, I'm going to say at any point, can hold there for a week, any time in May, that would be a really good action. Okay, now let's go back to a couple of things. Um, question came in about, let's see. Uh, let me just do this. Yeah, there it is. I'm going to look at, what was the question? I think you had a couple of stocks, someone there, PCT. PCT. So PCT, uh, very interesting. This is Pure Cycle Tech, Inc. We looked at it uh, a couple of times over the last week or so. Recycles contaminants into pure uh, polypropylene. And I'd say this is really strong. There's a big rectangle formation in the daily. If it breaks above it, that's going to be very good action. Today it did. It broke above the 200-period moving average. PCT. PCT is a symbol, 
trading at 7.53, up 28 cents right now in leg D. But the MACD is good. The stochastic's at 86%. The on-balance volume is a little overbought. Uh, good, a little overbought. The 9 is way above the 40, and the price is even above the 200. So far, this is really good action. <clears throat> this is in play, but it looks to me on a very short-term basis, it needs to hold $6.80 $6 this, this week. If there's a pullback below that, that's a problem. If it actually has a, even an eye blink push into the 776 area, another 20 cents above this, it's starting to turn the 200 period moving average of the 7.20s into some kind of a support. Wouldn't that be something? All right, the next question came in. So I, I, I'm getting my updated email, I believe. I've got some people that I can see quite nicely um, have uh, sent emails. Uh, the last couple of days have been a little fuzzy because I the Comcast did a whole bunch of things uh, that I had to get updated and not all of it is as smooth as it was before. But I, I question, I'm not sure if this is current or not. NVIDIA, I'm not sure, did NVIDIA come out with earnings? Are they still to come out with earnings? Uh, it's down a dollar at 285. Had a fabulous rain. Look at this. Look at this weekly. The cup, Chapman Wave Cup and Ladle breakout pattern. Oh, I love this pattern. Uh, but it's going from this gap. It's not a full breakout in terms of the larger cup formation. So let me just do this live. I can't do that to make the plumb line the low over there, but I'm going to go to the actual plumb line, which is the low, because we get, we should be able to get right there. And this is the low right here. So I've got to move that one bar in. Now that becomes green, a red, and this becomes green. And it says, NVIDIA has an exact price time plumb line low. Oh, my. It's just, I love this. Isn't this so fascinating? Look at it. There's your plumb line. I made it a little uh, a little earlier before using a particular candle, but now look at this. There's your plumb line from that low, the low of um, 108.12 back in October, and the, the left side high that I chose was the high of March, no, April the 1st, the week of the 1st, at 289.46 comes down to 108. I'd say that's a bit of a pullback, huh? Uh, the all-time high was, in fact, way, way back in November of 2021 at 346.75. Here's your Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. It, it did that first gap peak, peak beautifully. And now, uh, wait, I should be getting some comments from my NVIDIA uh, appraiser. Um, I'll be back to that in a moment. There it is. So that, that was it. That's your Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent line right there. Green. So this is standard stuff I do all the time, every day, all the different charts if they need be. And that took us to the week of the 28th of April to get to the left side high of, what did I say it was, 289. 46. Let me type that in to 289.46. Left side, right side, price time match. And what did we go to on Friday? A day late. Oh, I'm sorry. It was a day late. And it went to the exact resistance line, dashed line of 290.38. Oh, less than a dollar away after a year and it's a year, April to April. After a year, 22 to 20, yep, after a year. Um, so isn't that interesting? Now it's getting into the resistance area, but the technicals are still extremely strong. The stochastic is flat. Um, oh, that's right. The, our um, TFNL listener says, time to pump NVIDIA. I, I don't pump anything. I'm telling you right now, I'm just looking at the chart. And NVIDIA <clears throat> had... Um, a really strong rally on Friday, and today it's gone, it pulled back, but now it's running quite nicely. I have to tell you, this is a really good-looking chart, and it's the it's one of the prime sources of the SMH is holding so well, because some of those stocks in the SMH, Semiconductor Index, have done terribly. Uh, advanced micro devices went all the way down to the 200 period moving average. Just from the recent month and a half in the 102th area, it pulls back to the 80s, and now it's at 90 
19.72. I need to see the SMHs do very well. I need to see the SMHs running and leading the market. They're, they're, right now, they're kind of lagging and sort of following the market. I'll be back tomorrow with Basil Chapter. Oh, we've got one more segment. Uh, there's a lot to talk about when I get back. See you in a moment. Bye. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, okay, so we're back. So thank you very much for that explanation. So the wisdom tree Japan hedged equity fund seeks to provide exposure to the Japanese equity market while hedging exposure to fluctuations between the US dollar and the yen. Hey, that is that explains exactly the chart that I'm looking at. Thank you. I was a little confused about some of the aspects, but now I'm not. And I'm just typing this in here to help myself. I'll, I'll make it uh, smaller sometime later. Look at this. I showed my subscribers this uh, I, almost for weeks now. I've been looking at this WT. That is the, I spoke about this on Thursday and Friday, Wisdom Tree Inc., exchange traded funds, fixed income, currencies, commodities, making a new recovery high as we speak. That is really important, what I'm looking at. Uh, and, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So isn't that interesting? 
So this is telling us about the market, and it's looking at this market and saying, ho-hum, what are you getting upset about? I'm making high highs and mostly higher lows. The monthly chart is starting to improve. So we'll look at this again tomorrow and do it in a little bit more detail. What I want you to do now is just to sum up a, a couple of questions. Uh, ASPN, I don't know if I've got time for that. Let's just do this real quickly. ASPN. Here we go. Aspen something, I bet. Uh, yeah, Aspen something. Um, yeah, very strong move up. It's trading at 760 up 17 cents. I would make this, uh, the support that really needs to hold 720, 715. If it goes under, the, that's a problem, shorter term. But it is trying to rally. It's made a, a leg B. Today could be a peak B. Um, it needs to get to 1855 by Wednesday. They say this is not going to make one of those quick moves to the upside and then fail. It will continue. A question I got about Tesla. Yeah, Tesla's moving quite nicely today. It's up 77 cents at 170.83. Lexi, almost looks like, the, doesn't this look very much like the um, the FXI fund that we were looking at a little earlier? Yeah, this is holding well. 165 is really key support the next few days. I like what I'm seeing right now. I think we're just consolidating after the spectacular, maybe another day or so of consolidation. Then if we make higher highs this week, that's very positive.